What's up guys, in this video, I'm gonna go over three different things that you need to know to be able to factor perfect square trinomials. I was actually just making a video, and in the video, I had to factor out perfect square trinomials multiple times. And I get it, as a student, a lot of times when we're learning, we want things to be step by step. But once you start recognizing some patterns, a lot of times your teacher will sometimes either forget or for time purposes, not go over everything step by step. So that's why I wanted to make this video so you can be able to know what to look for so you can understand better factoring perfect square trinomials and be able to follow along with your teacher. So the first thing that you need to know about factoring perfect square trinomials is what exactly is the form. So when we're looking into factoring perfect square trinomials, we're gonna have something in the form of a squared and b squared, and then your middle term is going to be the product of those two times two. Now, if you have something in that form, then we know we can simply factor it down into a binomial squared of a minus b squared. So it's important thing, if your middle term is negative in the trinomial, then the middle term of your binomial squared is also gonna be negative. And you can see this is the exact same thing with the positive, a squared plus two ab plus b squared, and that can be factored down into the binomial squared of a plus b. So it's important to make sure you look at and understand this form because once you understand this form, you realize, oh, I can see why my teacher didn't explain everything step by step. Once you recognize that it's a perfect square trinomial, it's very easy to be able to rewrite it in factored form. The important thing though is to identify what your A and your B is. And those are going to be your square numbers. So that comes into the next thing is being able to identify our square numbers. Now, I get it, ladies and gentlemen. 13 times 13, 14, 14, 225. Okay, so I did all the square numbers up to 15, right? And I would probably say for a majority of students that are going to be in like high school, that would be pretty good, right? And you can even actually factor a perfect square trinomial if it's in the, the correct form without being some square numbers, but then you're dealing with radicals and it's a little bit more of a different type of a video. So it's really important though, whenever you see one of these numbers in the front as well as in the back, you need to understand, oh, this could be a perfect square trinomial. I have something squared, right? Minus a 2ab or plus a 2ab and then something else squared. So immediately in your brain, what I always said in my with my students was like, ding, ding, ding. You should recognize that pattern, something squared, something squared. It could be a perfect square trinomial. Now it's not always going to be the case. That's where it comes into understanding this middle term. But a lot of students will make mistakes factoring perfect square trinomials if they forget what your perfect squares are. So make sure you know these numbers. And the last tip is exactly what I just kind of alluded to. You need to understand when you can use perfect square or factoring a perfect square trinomial and when it is not. So I wanted to kind of go over an example to illustrate my point in this case. So remember, you can also have square numbers with variables, right? X squared, X to the fourth, X to the sixth. Those are all variables that we can rewrite raised to a power of two. Now in this case, we see a four and students are like, all right, that's a square number. We see a nine, okay, that's a square number. So then students might make a mistake of saying this is going to be a two X plus three Quine squared. Thanks, Mr. Glogan, this was so easy. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we need to make sure we always double check with our middle term because it's not always going to be the case. Because what I want you to see in this case, remember that your B is going to be two times your A times your C. So two times X is going to be a four X times three is going to be a 12 X. So unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, this would not work. Now, if we did have this, a four X squared plus 12 X plus nine, you could recognize, okay, two times three is six times two, 12, that works. Those are squared. Yes, that's going to be a two X plus three quine squared, done, right? And if you change that to a negative, right? If you make this a negative, then guess what? That's now going to be negative, okay? So that's how that simply can go ahead and work. Just make sure you understand the form, where it come, how to break it down, make sure you know your square numbers, and make sure you know when to use.